Thanks for staying with us now. According to Trading Economics, the annual inflation rate in Nigeria rose from the fourth month to a near 18-year high of 22.41% in May of 2023, up from 22.22% .22 in the prior month, and matching market estimates. Now, price of food, which is the most relevant in the CPI basket, continued to accelerate to 24.82%, in May, after jumping by 24.61% um, in April, mainly on account of vegetables, oil, bread, fruit, meat, and tubers. Now, prices also rose sharply from trans for transportation, rather, so 23.9% versus 23.1% amid um, the fuel shortages caused by the removal of um, government fuel subsidy by Nigeria's new president. Bola Ahmed Tunumbu. Now, McKenzie states that merchants today are planning and buying for their categories amid one of the hardest inflationary environment um, industries has also seen in decades. When a supplier brings a price increase to a merchant, especially in the economic environment, the buyer may not have the right tools, capacity, or time to determine whether a price increase is warranted. Now, so how can companies prepare to deal with long-term consequences of inflatory markets? And what are the safe strategies to price increment amid inflation? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Wage Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Wage Show. So I'm going to bring in Jeffrey like in a minute, but I want to hear your thoughts, NJ. What do you think is a safe way for businesses to increase their pricing? Um, because I just see that a lot of times, you know, you are wondering, ah, but this one does not affect you now. Uh -huh. Everybody's attributing, I mean, when it was first of all dollar scarcity, everybody was attributing yeah. um, things to dollar scarcity. Now it's fuel, you know, tomorrow will be something else, you know. So, but I mean, I feel like, you know, some people are not going about it the smart way. So what do you think? Um, well... For big business, small business, as long as you own a business, I would say um, some of the ways you, you can probably deal with this inflation is to look at, generally, just to look at your expenditure. What are your expenses? Um, qualify it, you know. What are the, um, you know, the ones that are reoccurring, the ones that, you know, one time only, what are the, what are the most important then you prioritize it and see, actually, even an evaluation will even help you with that. Starting with just evaluating how much you spend, what you spend on, and classifying it should help. You have a general overview of what your business is going to cost you in every area. So I guess that's one of the ways. I'm sure that, um, you know, um, as the night <laughs> goes on, we'll, we'll be focusing a whole lot more. So, yeah. Okay. Um, how about you, no, my fan? No, are you there? Um, can you hear me? Go ahead, we can hear you now. Okay, well, it's, um, it's a very dicey situation uh, that needs a lot of adjustment for both uh, companies, business owners, it's um it's that time where you like is uh, like NJ said that you have to reevaluate to know how to proceed with your with 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 your business when you look at the changes that you need to make i mean with regards to your staff with regards to um your purchases with regards to uh, procurement with regards to every aspect of your business i think it's important for businesses to know that these are times where adjustments need to be made and in the process of uh deciding whether or not you're going to increase because uh, eventually you might you may find yourself having to increase your prices there are different ways I mean, you could look at options of discount rates. You can look at it um, as against just shooting up your prices. 
you can make the increment a gradual process because some people just, oh, we're spending so much. We're not cutting down on what is unnecessary in our business. We're going ahead and we're increasing prices. At the end of the day, you find out that what you're going through as a business is also what customers are going through. They need to know how to spend their money wisely. So if you are increasing and you are not or you are seen to be inconsiderate of your customers, they're going to move somewhere else that they can afford to. So these are some of the things that you might need to consider when um, making your adjustments uh, and making it accordingly, something that is gradual and not something that is sudden, making people uh, to be in a state of panic or not being able to adjust accordingly. I think that's uh, um, um, important, but I'm sure... Um, our guests will do justice to absolutely topic. all right so let me bring in jeffrey williams edem is an accomplished business and sales leader with 12 years of experience in the fintech financial service and professional services industry combined now with a combined career experience as a new sales hunter account manager business um, developer business analyst and operations experts managing across functional team, Jeffrey focuses on achieving exceptional results in a highly competitive business environment that demands continuous improvement and volume profit focused results. Now he's an alumnus of Lagos and Columbia Business School, trained in Malin Heyman and value selling methodology, um, certified as a safe agile practitioner, Lean Six Sigma, Green Belt, business analyst, professional, and an emotional intelligence professional. He has joined us live, not looking like this picture at all. <laughs> but he's joining us live from the UK. Hi, Jeffrey. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good evening, Lagos. Good evening. <laughs> How are you doing? We've missed you in Nigeria. Oh, wow. I'm fine, I'm fine. Uh, when the picture came up, I, I could see everyone laughing to say, he doesn't look like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you, Jeffrey? I'm fine. I started growing my hair like four months ago, so it's growing well. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, so Jeffrey, I mean, you are someone that is very keen on, you know, business growth, for especially for uh, small businesses, right? So... Um, I know you've been monitoring the things that have been happening, you know, especially in our economy here in, back here in Nigeria. And you already know what is happening around inflation, the, the current lifting of the subsidy and so many things that have happened. Right. So it's a bit tight. I, I was talking to someone. I said everything still falls back to the consumer. Right? Like literally before i buy even toothpick right now i have to consider is it really important can i use my finger to remove whatever is coming like is disturbing my teeth because as a consumer it seems like everything is coming to me right if if um, the power prices go up for electricity it falls back on me if the price of fuel is going up it falls back on me whatever it is the, the case it's it falls back on me right and it's now worse for an entrepreneur especially for a small business because now you are now not just facing all of these that I've said. You didn't have, like, staff to take care of, right? So I, I would understand when businesses say, okay, yes, they want to increase their, what's it called, their prices, right? But I, I, I still believe that there should be a smart way. I'm currently trying to build up a budget for a client that had done something for last year. And I don't even know how to start because, you know, everybody, every vendor that I've called have said to me that, oh, madam, price don't change you so i'm still trying to rock my head how do i manage the pricing in a way that i do not chase my client away at the same time be profitable you know so it's a very tough place to be i don't know how you know we can manage this this situation so you tell me as the expert <laughs> thank you well, it's good to be here again um, I, I think to start the conversation, we need to look at what inflation really means. And I think when people understand it, it is easy for them to build out um, the right strategy, as, as you've mentioned. So um, in a more simpler way, inflation is you not having the same value for money that you used to have for whatever it is that you want to spend money on. So if I was buying 
um, a basket of tomatoes for 20,000 Naira. If the value of money drops, then I need to spend more money to buy that same basket of tomatoes. That's inflation. So when you see those index, when you say 16%, 19%, is the average index of how much you need to add to your current value of money to buy the same quantity of things that you usually would. Now, in the context of a business, there are probably three things that this would impact on. It would be your uh, cost of labor, uh, cost of uh, logistics, and the materials that you need to buy. And so when you're looking at adjusting or maintaining a price framework that makes your business I mean, continue to exist, uh, I think the first thing is to go back into the things that change because of inflation. So mm. I would look at labor. I would look at the material cost. Can I adjust my labor framework if I was getting five supervisors and that cost of five supervisors, if I keep two, and get junior people for five supervisors to work on, that changes my cost structure immediately. Now, the same applies to material. Um, can I source locally? Can I backward integrate? You know, can I change supplier? Can I agree a different price framework with my suppliers? And the same thing with logistics as well. The things that you need to continue to keep your business running you know, all of these things are impact, impacted when, when inflation comes. And so if you want to start building the right strategy, I think you need to start from those indices and look into them. Um, one very, very notable one I advise people is don't be quick to change your price. Sometimes you have very good margins. Uh, so for instance, if your average margin is 40%, if you're in the clothing business, if you're in the food business, your average margin will be between 10 and 12% and so on and so on for different sector. Now, if the inflation rate, for example, is 16%, but your, your, your average margin is 40, 42%, can you still cushion and sustain your price? Yes, you can. Now, the strategy of sustaining your price means that volume will come because others may not react to the market that way because they don't have the same price structure, uh, cost structure that you have. So my advice from a strategy point of view is if the impact is not a lot to your cost, sustain your price. That way, your market share is potentially going to increase because people will come to you. Um, so oh, I think about it, or you go to the market and on a popular shade where a lady is selling ugu and you find that a particular woman always has the same quality, the same quantity, but her price is 200 naira, 500 naira cheaper. Definitely more market women will go there to go shop from her, automatically she's getting more volume, more sales to compensate for the reduced margin that she mm. has. So for me, that okay. would be the first approach. I, I'm, I'm going to have a follow-up question, but I quickly want to go on a very short break, right? When we come back from that break, um, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're having an amazing conversation already with Jeffrey Williams Adam on safe strategy to price increments amidst inflation. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. You can also tweet at us at We Show Africa One. Jeffrey, I already believe that we cannot even exhaust this conversation today because I mean there's more that can come out of it. But quickly, before I come to NJ and Norma. Now, I understand my, because I, I run a, a, a beauty business, right, skincare to be precise, and um, perfumery business for years. And usually our markup would be around, say, 40, 45%, right? But um, some other people, based on the rentals that they also, like their overhead in terms of rentals, you know, having like stores in like the malls, I see their pricing and I see, I'm able to calculate that their pricing is already around that 70% markup. Do you understand? Based on the pricing. So, um, you know that this price is not, is like an, is a hydra headed, um, 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 what's it called? Increment. Because if we are not being hit from the three things you talked about, labor, logistics, material, 
we are being hit by probably cost of the rental, right? Property. That's one of the major costs for businesses. So, I mean, if I'm already putting up like a 50% markup based on the fact that, okay, I've considered rent, I've considered salaries, I've considered all of those things. When these things then go up, how do I manage it? I can't, no matter how, uh, what's it called, the, I, how slim I want to go with that markup, it will still not be, you know, at some point, I believe the way I see it, honestly speaking, I think some businesses would have to do like a 200, 300% markup for them to be able to sustain the other things that come with just running the day-to-day -day business am i correct or that is very wrong well you are right people have to adjust um uh, their price in order to sustain their business so absolutely you are correct but i think what we're discussing is how do you do it safely so that you don't run out of business i think that's what we're discussing if you are able to do it in such a way that your business can continue to exist, you can do it in such a way that people will continue to patronize you, then you, you've done very well for yourself. And just to mention, in, in that situation, you've actually also mentioned the solution. If you have a physical business location and it's costing you a lot, it's time to start transiting into an online type business mm. because that's where the volume of people who may not have opportunity to come to your business will have access to it. Uh, for me, that would be the best strategy. It's less expensive. You don't have those overhead costs that you've just mentioned. And that way to help you to sustain um, the price that you want to apply. And in that way, it's more around, repos around positioning your brand. So if your business was a B2B, as an example, maybe it's time to consider a B2C. Maybe it's time to consider a B2B2C. Maybe it's time to also consider moving it from a brick and mortar to a more online type business. There are always situations that you can adopt that allows the opportunity for you to either increase it little, sustain it, or gradually increase it as, as, as mentioned on the program. So that would probably be an approach to look at, but you can't take away inflation, it's there. So it's now, how do you want to approach it? And what do I need to do as a business so that I don't overprice myself? Now, just to mention, you mentioned a very unique situation. It's the mall. So everybody has the same situa business situation. That means that when you change your price in such an environment, you, most likely your competitors are also changing their price because the same cost matrix affects them and also affects you as well. But in some cases, it's not. So before you change your price, one of the strategy you need to look at is you need to look at what competitors are doing. You don't want to say what was 1,000 Naira is now 3,000 Naira and everybody else is 2,000 Naira. You would overprice yourself. So be conscious of that as well as you make your decision around pricing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, um, I was going to ask actually what he just answered. I, I had two questions in mind. Uh, one was how do businesses literally save costing in terms of how do you manage your business so that you don't because i know um he earlier mentioned that you should sustain his best advice is for you to sustain the price so that you get get a uh, you can eat into the market share but my question so follow up to that is what are the things that you have to do in order to because as a business when you um sustain that price your costing is not going to drop your costing is still up and it's still going up, depending on the, the way the market has been, you know, has been affected. So what are the things that businesses can do in order to be able to thrive during this sustaining the price? Do you understand? So what, I, I don't know, do you, do you understand my question? I do, I do. Yes. So, so what yeah. are those things that businesses can actually do in order to be able to... Um, try during that period of sustaining the price just, just so keep that, it afloat yes just keep the business <laughs> afloat what are those things what are the things that the businesses will have to look into or do in order to sustain that whole process um i, I think one of the things i've advised people in the past is to diversify the product portfolio and let me break that down so that everybody can understand that um you have a certain product so you, let's say for instance you're selling wig um, in, your, in your fashion business, you would have a certain niche that you're addressing. You want to keep up premium hair and all of that. 
when you diversify your portfolio, it means that you want to sell other type of products to other type of customers, right? And you can change that by quantity, quality, right? Or variation that comes with the product. And what that means is you would sustain the high paying customers, but have a variance for the mid price category of customers or below the pyramid customers. So that way your, your core product is not diluted because you are trying to reduce your price. Um, one, of, one of the things I've seen as well is people have found ways to layer value to sustain this. So what that means is if I enjoy eating at a restaurant, what the restaurant could do is take away two chickens and offer me one with my rice and say, if you want to cook or fries with that, right, the price would be what you are used to. So when you recalibrate your product mix, you are able to sustain price for the items that are expensive, you sell expensive. For the items that are cheap, you provide better pricing for that. For items that were more voluminous before, you need to dissect the offering in such a way that customers are also affected by inflation. Remember, it's, just, it's not the businesses alone. The people buying those products are also affected. They might want a, a smaller or different variants for the price that they are comfortable with, and they can build on that gradually in order to achieve the overall value that they feel right to spend more money on. Mm, absolutely. Now, well, let me come to you. All right, uh, Jeffrey, just uh, to add to Angie's question, now I want to concentrate uh, in the context of startup businesses. I'm talking about, for example, someone, uh, an agege bread seller who may not have product mix or may not have the opportunity to, or may not have the assets to be able to diversify in that regard. What would your 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 advice be for somebody like that? Somebody who has a store, you know, just regular everyday people. They may not. They may be startup businesses or small businesses, and do they do not have that capacity um, to diversify? Like you've rightly said, what would be safe strategies that they can use to stay afloat? Because literally, these people don't have. Um, income as it were. I mean, what they're bringing in is not as much as if you had a business, a thriving business. So what would you advise um, someone in that capacity to do? That's one. And then what role does the God actually play in helping, um, you know, businesses or individuals through a process of price in, um, increment or inflation? as it were. I don't know if that's clear. Uh, yeah, so I would take the first one. You probably asked the second question again, because it was, was too Okay, much. that's fine. I was thinking about okay, so, go ahead. Okay, so um, price is a factor of cost. So mm -hmm. we can't take away the fact that price may have to increase. And please understand that because you've increased your price or because you sell at a premium or higher price, does not mean you're not going to get customer. It is the impact that most times people look at, which is I may have less customer than I should. That's the impact. Or it will take me a longer time, a longer sales cycle to sell what I want to sell. Those are the impact. So if that little small business has calculated its costs and understands that my overall cost is 80% and I'm going to make 20% margin, I think for those kind of customer, it is positioning that is important now because there's nothing you can do around the price. How do you want to sell your product? How do you want to position this product? Um, do you want to um, offer certain things with that pricing so that you attract the kind of customers that you are looking for, right? So in such a situation, go with your price. As long as the cost is clear, there's really nothing because you're a small business. Every margin means something to you, right? Now, in some cases, people find ways to sell in addition to what they do. So I'll give you an example. There is a, a, a lady who sells Amala, right? Local um, Amala joint in Sabo. I don't want to mention the name, but a lot of people know there. Now, you go there, you have your Amala. Now, usually, 
the amala you buy is, is maybe a thousand, right? And you go back and it says it's a thousand two hundred. See, when you're hungry, whether they sell it at one thousand two or one thousand three, you still eat, right? So what she did was that she met with her vendors and struck a deal that allows her to get free water from vendors. So instead of reducing the price, she now started offering water with the Amala when you buy it. Now, the margin that she makes on the Amala is maybe 200 Naira. The cost of the water is 40 Naira. So she's now selling with a margin of 160 Naira. And again, you have to look at it. Is that visible to sustain your business? If it is, sustain it as, a, as, as my first strategy. The problem becomes if the margin of inflation is higher than the margin that you make from your business, then that business is going to crumble. That's what you should need to look out for. Now, if the margin is reasonable enough to sustain your operation and your growth, and of course, saving for, for future growth, then I think you are in a good place. Okay. Jeffrey, I really loved what you had mentioned earlier on leveraging technology, right? Um, building technology. Um, I mean, many years ago, a friend of ours actually started her business on um, online. It was purely online until a lot of pressure to then have a physical store. She eventually had a physical store. But, I mean, basically, most of her businesses still come from online requests and all of that. I, and I see that is happening, right? So how can we approach, you know, as we round up this conversation, how can we approach, you know, moving, especially for people that are able to have those? Because literally, there's, any, there's nothing right now that you cannot do online. Even food business, I mean, a lot of people, the logistics um, industry has really boomed because so many people now are relying on, um, uh, what's it called, dispatch and all of that, hailing services to bring their goods to them. So how can we begin to move? If you say there's a strategic plan to then say, okay, you know what, in the next few months i want to just integrate my business so that i take off all that cost and put it and invest it you know what would be a good way to to move your business especially for those that can actually move um to a virtual store what's the quickest way or the best way to, to approach that okay uh, that's a very good point I, I i think we have we're living in a very 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 great era where nigeria is being celebrated for the way it has adopted e-commerce the way it has adopted technology, uh, the rate at which people are now using smart devices, the overall penetration of data within Nigeria. So it's a very good era to, to go into digital commerce. Um, I think the first is to understand your business operations first and what part of that business operations need to change for online business to be made possible. Most times we make the mistake of just switching on the online business Meanwhile, the overall logistics and structure of the business does not support it. And then the woman or the man gets frustrated and then shuts everything down. So that would be the first thing. Understand your business operations. Understand the part of that business that needs to change. The second part is that you need to know the available solutions online. Uh, so who is providing what? What tools do they have? What are my needs as a company if I switch to this platform or adopt a platform? Do they have the necessary tools that would benefit my type of business? If it's food, if it's tailoring, if it's service, it must be there. Otherwise, you would then go through your process of integration, waste time, waste effort, waste money to just realize that you, you took the wrong decision. The third part is... The people within your organization need to know that as a business owner, you are going towards that direction. You can't isolate everyone else and take that decision because you will not be the one to run that on a daily basis. Mm. So as part of your business strategy, talk to the team. Identify who among the team will be responsible for managing that. Provide for them the adequate training that is required. Mm. Pick a vendor that has a very well-structured support system that can train and provide support for these people that you have um, delegated to manage that part of the business. And if you can, step back after a couple of months to evaluate if the business is really benefiting from taking that decision. I've seen businesses crumble because they went online. 
They can't meet the demand. They can't sustain the operational requirements for going online. And then brand just gets messed up. So very frequently, check on it. Check the sales is bringing in. Check the capacity impact it's having on your business. Check the reviews online. Check the customers that, that, that they are happy. And I'm sure with these steps, that the, the company would do well. Awesome. Awesome. What a nice way to put it. Um, Jeffrey, we'll definitely bring you back. And I want to even just add that. I, I like the fact that you said carry the, the team along. Even your cu customers, right? There will be a, a smart way to also carry them along in, in um, telling them, okay, you know, how would you like your services to be? Would you prefer that we bring this goods or whatever it is to you? You know, I'm sure by the time you get those filters, you'll be able to tell, you know, you know, if your customers are, um, especially your existing customers, because you definitely mm -hmm. get new customers online, that your existing customers are open to, you know what, let us integrate, you know, to an online, um, fully fleshed online. Well, would you advise that quickly? Like if you are physical and you want to go online and it's getting really success, uh, successful, would you advise that just quick move everything online or it's still best to manage both brick and mortar and online? Quickly. I don't think I don't think you have a straightforward answer. Or if you if you have customers who come into your store, you don't want to close them out, right? No. What if your online sales becomes bigger than your brick and mortar? Well, I would say if it saves you costs, there must be a strategic reason why you okay. do that. So yes, if it saves you costs, yes. You are a man of you are a man of strategy. You don't want to answer straight questions. <laughs> so I will not look for you. But thank you so much, Jeffrey. <laughs> thank you so much. We'll definitely need to schedule more of you on the show <laughs> because we need to get ourselves uh, informed and you know and we need these strategies for for us at i mean it's is really very apt thank you norma thank you nj now before we go ensure you follow us across all social media handles at way africa you can drop your comment like share invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation we apologize we can't take messages today now if you missed our quote for today here it is again it says dynamic pricing Charging more when goods and services are in high demand and short supply and less when the opposite is true isn't new. Gasoline retailers, hoteliers and airlines have been deploying this technique for years. Can you imagine that? We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.